secure. But security may be something you've never had much of in your life. You may have experienced conditional love and performance-based love, but not much love that's there when you're unlovable. Maybe there have been people, positions, or things that were your security blanket, but when they're gone and with them, that sense of being safe. If you've been disappointed in relationships, hurt a lot, or if you're tired of losing what you were hanging on to, then you're ready to experience God's love. God's love is complete and secure for those that come to Him through His Son, Jesus Christ. If you want to learn how to have a relationship with Jesus and be eternally secure in God's love, then call 888-NEED-HIM. That's 888-NEED-HIM. Or chat with us at chataboutjesus.com. There are so many different types of businesses today. Some sell items in a retail location, while others offer a service and are based in an office setting. There are also home-based businesses that use the internet as their storefront. In the middle of all this diversity, there is one thing that is common to just about every business, the need to accept credit cards. When it comes to credit card processing, Cornerstone Payment Systems has made a firm commitment to offer reliable processing, but never for businesses that are immoral or objectionable. They also offer your business a chance to provide an ongoing donation to AFA for as long as your credit card processing is done by Cornerstone Payment Systems. All the details are available online at afaprocessing.com, afaprocessing.com, or by phone at 800-508-9030. That's 800-508-9030. Cornerstone Payment Systems is a registered ISO of Harris Bank, Buffalo Grove, Illinois, member FDIC. AFR Talk. You're listening to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. Focal Point with Brian Fisher. Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point and AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. Number to call, 888-589-8840. Take your calls on the Virginia election results and on this amnesty catastrophe we've got on the southern border couple of sound bites I want to play real quick before we do that. You know, this has really rattled the, I've got a new term. I'm going to call them the minnows. These are moderates in name only. We've got the rhinos. These are Republicans in name only. I think a moderate is just another term for a liberal. They are a moderate in name only. So I'm going to call them minnows. Here's a minnow, uh, Representative Peter King. He's a a Republican, but he is a minnow. He is a moderate, classifies himself as a moderate. But he is a minnow. He is a moderate in name only. He's saying one of the things we can't let happen after this Dave Bratt defeat of Eric Cantor, we cannot let the Ted Cruz's and the Rand Paul's take over this party. Can't let that happen. So they're going to war uh, over the conservative Republicans in the party. Let's see if I got anything uh, else here that I want to add to the mix here. You know, some people are trying to explain this, that Cantor lost. I got a piece from Eric Erickson. Well, Cantor lost because he was arrogant. He was obnoxious. His people were uh, just making irritants of themselves up on Capitol Hill, uh, that they were had a reputation for being obnoxious on Capitol Hill. And I thought to myself, well, that doesn't make any sense to me at all because who in Virginia even knows about that or even cares about that? Now, Eric uh, Erickson did say that Cantor seemed to have lost touch with his constituents. Now, that would matter. You know, if they felt like he was too busy running for Speaker of the House and wasn't representing them, then that could be uh, an issue. And again, I think Rand Paul is playing with fire here. He's working with these pro-amnesty groups. And man, if I was him, if I was his part of his brain trust, after what happened last night, i say, don't you dare go meet with Michael Bloomberg and Grover uh, Norquist on uh, amnesty. Other people trying to say this was Democrats crossing over, uh, isn't any shred of proof of that at all. In fact, this liberal journalist I talked to this morning, they were trying to say, well, maybe Democrats crossed over. I'm looking at an analysis. I won't go into it. But a turnout in heavily Democratic districts was lower than usual. In the Republican districts, it was higher than usual. So if it was Democratic crossover, then you'd expect to have elevated numbers in the sections in District 7 that were uh, Democrat, leaning Democratic didn't happen. They Those numbers were actually uh, down. Uh, here's the Huffington Post bemoaning the fact that if, with Eric Cantor, who's a Jew, and who, who even knew that or who even cared? Uh, but they're saying, oh, this is they're wringing their hands because now the 
congressional Republicans have lost their only non-Christian in uh, the House. Now, the good news is everybody's thinking, look, this is um, this is the end of the line for immigration, for uh, amnesty. It's not going to happen. Uh, they're saying both sides, the pro-amnesty people are terrified, and the anti-amnesty people are terrified even to think about compromise uh, on uh, this deal. Uh, New York Times has got an analysis saying this is a bad omen for moderates. Cantor's uh, loss. Conservatives who have helped fuel some of the most contentious showdowns over the last three years on issues such as immigration and raising the federal debt ceiling are likely to be emboldened by Mr. Cantor's shocking loss. You can bet your sweet bippy uh, about that. Uh, this is going to be good for Chris McDaniel. We'll ask him about this at 2.45 in just an hour. But I think this is a huge momentum boost for Chris McDaniel, who's also running a grassroots insurgent kind of uh, a campaign. Uh, so anyway, um, New York Times wringing their hands over what has happened. A couple of sound bites before we go to the phones, 888-589-8840. Here's Dave Bratt, last night, Sean Hannity, explaining why he think he won. Let's listen. What do you attribute this big win tonight to? Well, I, I, it's pretty much been in my stump speech, and it basically just lays out. I mean, every, if you go door-to-door -door knocking, the American people know the country is heading in the wrong direction, right? I mean, the debt and the deficits, the economic growth is terrible. Uh, the regulatory burden is terrible. And uh, the representation in D.C. won't address those major issues. And so I think the people are just ready for some major changes in this country. And uh, I, I was blessed. I mean, it's a miracle. What do I attribute to? First of all, I attribute it to God, and I'm utterly humbled and thankful. to. You know, I, I'm a believer, and so I'm humbled uh, that God gave us this win. So Dave Bratt says, look, I believe that God's blessing and favor were on this candidacy. I'm grateful for this victory. I think he had something to do with it. But he says more fundamentally or more pragmatically, I just basically ran on the Republican Party platform. You know, I went door to door. I talked about the debt. I talked about deficits. I talked about the regulatory burden, which is now $1.8 trillion a year of a drag on the economy. And he thinks that's why he won. Here's a second clip. Also, Dave Brandt talking to uh, Sean Hannity last night on about what he ran on in this campaign. But I ran on the Republican principles. And we have this Republican creed in Virginia and the only problem with the Republican principles is no one's following them. The first one is the commitment to free markets. No, we don't have any free markets in this country anymore, right? And then equal treatment yeah. under the law and fiscal responsibility, constitutional adherence, peace through strong uh, defense, and then faith in God and, and, uh, and strong moral fiber. That's what I ran on, the Republican creed. But the press is just always out to have these exciting stories to sell papers. And the people actually do care about policy. When you're serious, I give 30-minute stump speeches on policy, and the press made fun of me. They said, these aren't yeah. good stump speeches. You're, you're talking serious mm -hmm. issues. Well, the American people are ready for serious issues. Yeah, it's interesting to me because he's running as an unapologetic conservative. He says, I just ran on Republican principles, the principles that the party is supposed to stand for in every single uh, election. Uh, free markets equality before the law, fiscal responsibility, adherence to the Constitution, peace through strength, faith in God, strong moral fiber. Uh, nothing exotic about those. They're just basically what it means to be Republican. So conservatism wins every single time it's tried. He just ran on a solid conservative message, both social, economic, and national defense, and he won this thing going away, the shocker of the decade. Let's go to the phones. Let's grab a call, first of all, from Jane in Glen Allen, Virginia. Jane, welcome. What's on your mind? Hey, Brian. Hey. Um, I live in Eric Cantor's district, and I just wanted to make a couple of comments, if you'd let me. Yes, ma'am. Um, this amnesty thing may be the straw that broke the camel's back, but we have been trying to get rid of Eric Cantor for a long time. And he, he might not have had support from Heritage or Freedom Works, but he had... Tea Party support here around our area, and he won not just because of amnesty. He won because we liked what we heard when he spoke, just like that clip you just played. He laid it out. We have never heard these words from Eric Cantor. Eric Cantor only comes around every time there's an election. 
we never see or hear from him. He doesn't hold town halls. He doesn't come. He doesn't care. And if you call his office, you get lip service, and he never does what you ask. Well, you know, that's interesting, Jane. So, so what you're doing is, is you're really agreeing. I, I read that one assessment that, look, he just got out of touch with his constituents, seemed to be more occupied with national issues, campaigning to be Speaker of the House instead of representing his district, and just sort of lost touch. And, you know, Chris McDaniel is running against Thad Cochran in Mississippi in the Senate primary, and people are making the same complaints about Thad Cochran. He, he, nobody sees him. He doesn't show up. He won't debate Chris McDaniel any well, more than— that was the other point I wanted to make. And all these commercials that we have been inundated with on TV, he's told outright lies about Dave Bratt. I mean, complete and utter lies. Our, our mailboxes have been stuffed daily with glossy, huge poster letters every day, two or three. I could, I could wallpaper my house with them. He refused to debate Dave Bratt. He calls himself a conservative over and over and over, and he must think the people in this district are so stupid because he is not a conservative. And as soon as we heard any words coming out of Dave Bratt's mouth, everyone rallied around him. And if, and if Cantor had bothered to come home to Richmond and ride around, he would have seen there are no Cantor signs in anybody's yard. The last few elections, people had them everywhere. This time, they were nowhere. No one had Cantor signs. In my neighborhood, I think I saw one. There's, there, you know, everybody is fed up. We are sick of it. We want someone who will stand up to Barack Obama and save us from what's happening. Hmm. All right, Jane. Well, listen, that's a powerful call. Let me, you know, and I got some emails from folks that said, look, uh, you know, I had Eric Cantor signs in my yard. Then I heard an interview with him. I went out and took the Cantor signs down and put up the Brat signs. So once Brat was able to kind of get his message out to people, they believed it and responded to it. Uh, a couple of quick things. Do you think there's any chance, Jane, that Cantor would run a write-in campaign? Uh, at this point right now, I don't think so. I, I, I did last night and this morning, but I think that he's resigning uh, his, um, his um, you know, position. Yeah, I, I, don't, see, I don't think that he is. See, the I thing, think I was he wa- knows we are done. We're done with him. Okay. Yeah, that's, see, that's, that's what I was wondering. I was wondering if his resigning from his post as majority leader – if he knew that he was going to need to resign in order to be able to start a write-in campaign, he couldn't credibly hang on to his position with the Republican Party in leadership and then run a write-in campaign against the Republican nominee. But you think he knows. He got the message last night. He's toast. Oh, loud and clear. Let me tell you, Brian, when I went up to vote yesterday at Glen Allen High School, uh, there were so many cars there, and I thought people were coming to vote. Well, really, the kids were getting ready to graduate, and they were getting on buses to go downtown. I went in to vote. There was like two people there. I asked the people, how many people have voted? And they said 100 and something. And I said, you're kidding me. I was so depressed. And I, I saw a friend outside who was a Tea Party friend of mine. And she, we, we just said, well, if we can just get enough to scare Canner, if we can just get enough to let him know that we are waking up. Because we, we believed the lies. We believed he was going to win. And we were just kind of consoling one another. And the and the the... The Eric Canner boy that was sitting down a little further, you want some information? I said, no, I'm not voting for him. I'm voting for Dave Bratt. And uh, uh, when I came out, you know, I told her what had happened, and, and we both said again, well, if, if we can just get enough yeah. to scare him. Well, you know, i got to let you go, Jane, because I'm, I'm out of time. But, you know, it's interesting to me. That's, that's exactly what – that was the most optimistic I think most people were, that, well, if, if Dave Bratt can just get into the 40s, maybe he can send a message to the GOP elites. I don't know if anybody, I mean, I certainly did not expect him to win, let alone win by double-digit margin. It's a shocker. He's uh, Vesuvius, GOP elites. They are Pompeii. Back after the news. Stay with us.